This is the one time it's only safe to live in the comments. <laughs> that is where Logan lives. You ask, he answers. We're going to get straight to it. And these are some pretty good questions that the fans have for you. The first one talks about the linebackers. A lot of confusion on what are they going to sure. do? How are they going to do that? Because there's a lot of different formations that this team uses on their defense. So the first one comes at you. Do they need two serviceable linebackers given the different formations that they use? I think absolutely you need two serviceable linebackers. I think you probably need four, right? Because I think you have two guys that are going to start in your nickel package, right? You got four D linemen, two linebackers. You need two guys to back those spots up. So you got Jamin Davis, probably Cody Barton. You need maybe two other guys, I think, to fit in there. I also think it's important to recognize that those DBs, they can move into some of those spaces. I don't think you want to live there all the time, 24-7, but you have the athletes to get that done. So I think it's going to be kind of an amalgamation of different personnel, but I think you need at least four linebackers on the roster. And one thing Coach was saying, too, is like you want that position flex yes, because then right. you don't have to take somebody off the field because of what they have, where they're at. You can just move them around depending on what absolutely. you're calling. Absolutely, absolutely, yep. Uh, the next question wants to know basically why we don't have a tight end, and every time the wide receiver runs a screen, they get nowhere. Can Eric Bieniemy and his offense fix that? Yes, yeah, so let's talk about the screens. I think that's something exciting. You know, Tana was the screen master, so he can probably speak to this a little bit too. So what I will say is one of the things about Eric Bieniemy is he is so detailed, boys, with how he runs these screens. Mm -hmm. So I picked this play. So first off, you got to know when to call a screen. Yeah. This is third and ten, right? It's in the red zone. You can tell Arizona likes to bring pressure in the red zone. You see all these guys standing up here near the line of scrimmage. They're getting ready to heat you up. So watch the offensive line. Watch how detailed they are here, right? They bring a simulated pressure here. That means they're only rushing four, even though it looked like they were going to rush a whole bunch of guys here. We got one, two, three, four. You can get all your guys out on the screen. Watch these guys get out. I love this dude right here, this, this backside guard. He checks towards the quarterback, which is a little bit unusual. Say, why does he do that? He's the rat killer. The mm -hmm. thing that kills screens is the pursuit. Yep. So I got to make sure there's no pursuit. The next thing I love about this is the fact that Tony Wiley, or, or Wiley here, watch him here. He does a great job of saying, I've got this guy locked up. He is not going to pursue to the football. I have him locked in. It allows the back to get to the second level. Watch these offensive linemen too. They know the rules here. They understand what's going on. They say, we're not getting downfield in this look until the ball's caught. Awesome job by them. Ball's caught. And watch the back, Tana. This is something that, uh, that uh, Kyle used to say to you all the time. Not wider than the offensive line, mm -hmm. allowing them to set those guys up. So it's, to me, the thing that makes these screen goes is the detail-oriented nature of the screen game and how well these guys are coached. So I think that's just going to come when EB comes because we got guys who can run these types of plays. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest things. You want these guys to be coached up well. I was, I, you know, when I watched us not have uh, success with the screens, I was like, it, have it, it probably wasn't being coached or emphasized as much. So yeah. uh, EB's going to come in here and make sure those guys have that thing well oiled. It's yeah. all about patience. It's all about patience with screens, setting us up as the defense. Let us rush you, rush you, rush you. Then you hit up with a screen, so it's time. Absolutely. And then, Julie, you also asked about the tight ends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think a lot of people don't know about the tight ends we have on the roster. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got Logan Thomas. We got Bates. There's not a better blocking Y in the game than Bates. Bates. I Logan love Bates. Thomas was a top yeah. 10 player a couple years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got Curtis, uh, Curtis Hodges. You got yeah. um, Armani, Armani Rogers, Rogers. right? Mm -hmm. Those guys, Cole Turner, are excellent. And when I look at this, just take a look at this, guys. Armani Rogers ran a 4.58 at his pro day. Yeah. That would have been the fastest of the guys drafted mm -hmm. in the first round, the first two rounds this year, right? He got a 34 inch vertical. And look at this arm length here, 33 and 1 8, 34 and a half. Those, those are big, long, athletic guys mm -hmm. that can catch the football well. So in terms of my understanding of the position, right, you got two excellent starters. you got a guy you drafted last year in Cole Turner who's a really good football player. Mm -hmm. And then you have these two lottery tickets, yeah. two lottery ticket athletes. And I think that's something that gets me excited when I say mm -hmm. this is why they didn't draft him because they got two young, young bucks here yeah. who, who have a ton of athletic potential. Cole Turner is the one that I'm ready. I'm ready to see him yep. play because he's the wide receiver out the bunch. Yep. He's the one that you split out. He's the one that becomes a, 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 a matchup nightmare. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up, Fred, because Armani was a converted quarterback. He's mm -hmm. the fastest guy of the bunch. Yep. Curtis Hodges at 6'8 was the wide receiver in college. So they've yeah. got all these guys, to your, to your point, yeah. that catch the football really well and adjust the football really well in the air. I think it's fantastic. And just think about it, Rodgers played well last year yeah. with the little time he got. So just imagine him in the offense that we have now, man. You find a way to get him, you know, acclimated in this offense. Hey, it yeah. could be dangerous. I think the little time that we've seen, I think that's why this question keeps coming up. Yeah. Because we haven't seen them on that's the field point. at a regular basis consistently because they dealt with so many different injuries mm -hmm. to that room. Yeah. And so folks are anxious to see, like, okay, right now we're still talking about potential. Yes, absolutely. We want to see action on the field. Absolutely. Uh, but 
healthy, <laughs> there's a reason to be excited about the tight end position. Okay, we have Sam Howell taking over most of the main duties here. He is QB number one for all intents yes. and purposes until maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe never. Yeah, so maybe never some comes Absolutely, in. absolutely. Uh, but he also, he has a teammate that he had in, in college in De'Ami Brown. Do you see them rekindling that? chemistry that they had in college. I mean, I think we saw a little bit of that in the preseason last year when they both played in that in that Baltimore game, right? The connection they were able to have, the deep ball, like the the understanding of, of where he's supposed to be and how to get that ball out there. So I think, yeah, definitely that's going to be a big deal there. I think, um, I do think that you know, I don't really care about Diami. He's the fourth guy. I want to know yeah. how he's going to throw to Terry. I want to know how he's going to throw to Jahan and mm -hmm. Curtis. Those relationships are more important to me, but I definitely think this can only benefit for, for be a benefit for Diami. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'm with you. I don't yeah. think that they, they rekindled it because Terry is the alpha yes, male. Right. I like like Curtis is I think Curtis is the one that's gonna really open up people's eyes this year and show that he can make plays, especially because of Eric B enemy. Yeah. He's used to dealing with a guy like Curtis. He's gonna put him in screen the screen plays. Yeah. They will be Curtis. Same, so I think it's going to that marriage will be there. But Deami will become a, a great asset. You need yeah. multiple guys to come in and sub for those guys time and time again. And I'm hoping he can get back to that form that he was in in college. His confidence back last year, we saw some saw signs of that. I want him to be that confident receiver. I understand he has the talent. I understand yeah. that he hasn't probably showed that thus far on this level. But it's going to come. It's going to come having his guy back there at quarterback and getting familiar a little more. And then, you know, the more years you put in this game, that's when you start getting a little more comfortable okay. and start seeing things a lot slower. So I need him to be that guy that he was in college with him so he can be a, a, a valuable asset to us. And also different skill sets, right? He's a guy that's explosive, can yeah. take the top off of a defense. So it's nice that your fourth guy can get that done for you. And yeah. Consistency. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's the biggest thing too. When yeah. he has his opportunities, we've seen he can make them. Can he mm -hmm. do it consistently to where he can be on the field and be that legit fourth guy that can really challenge defenses yeah. with our 11th ranked according to ESPN live <laughs> receiving room thank you very much yeah that's Tell for another it. day different show uh how about this next question do you believe that we could read the franchise could revive the old bread and butter the counter gap can the o-line do that or have defenses basically figured it out yeah i mean that's a really good question and you guys probably don't know too much about that but i will say that when the counter no. gap scheme is, I do. teams no. still run the counter gap mm -hmm. they still run that play it's just off of an R rpo zone read type of action Washington ran a version of it last year, and I think having more athletic guards and having a, an offense that's a little bit more spread out, it's not going to have two tight ends and a fullback the way that they ran it, you know, when Regal was here and all those guys. It'll look a little bit more modern, off an RPO action from the gun. Teams still run that, so it's still a part of the offense. It's not going to have that same kind of smash mouth feel to it, yeah. but I think that, that the play, just like the NFL, has evolved. So keep an eye out for it because I, I will say Kansas City runs that play. It's not a staple. It can't be the only play you run. Defenses are too good for that. So Logan's taking a half second of a break yeah. here. Fred, yes. this one comes to you and they ask, what advice would you give Emmanuel Forbes for tackling someone like Derek? <laughs> My dad is a preacher, so we're going to start with prayer, all right? <laughs> we're going to start with prayer, and he knows what I understood at that, at that age. The quicker you get in the backfield when a player's mm. developing, yeah. The easier guy is to tackle. You get that pickup truck before we get to running down here. <laughs> and he understands that and he's smart and he knows that. You know, I must say, I saw Fred do that often. Mm -hmm. He yeah. would be back there so fast. I'm like, why is he always trying to beat the play? Because he didn't want to let it develop. I, I so do not want to let it develop. And he yeah. also has got a really good feel for like attacking that outside thigh and not yeah. like a big car crash hit there. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. Yep. Yeah. Pound for pound. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, the I, best I, player in the you. league. Emmanuel I'm Ford. with you on that one. <laughs> pound for pound. Uh, this next one is for you, Santana. Uh, we're always trying to figure out who is going to be that guy at punt return. Can we get oh. more out of them? So the question is, can somebody do kick returns and punt returns? Can they do both? It depends on who the, who the guy is. I think one of the things that I was fortunate to have, I was a kick returner first that later was forced to be a punt returner. You got great and, hands, though. And yeah. due to the fact, bingo, having hands and then knowing how to judge a ball and still be able to come up under it and mm -hmm. catch it with your hands and still be able to get up field, you know, you don't have, you don't necessarily have that many guys that they're drafting these days that can do all those things. So hopefully we get a guy that's just mainly for that. You know what I mean? I feel like we had some guys in the past that was here, but then, you know, play well here. So they end up going elsewhere. Andre Carter. Yeah. But um, hopefully we can find that because, you know, we're not saying, saying no names and nothing like that, but we're going to need difference well, makers. No, they, we need they difference makers. They did want to know, though. can Allen challenge Milne? Uh-huh. 
it is all about competition. Yeah, yeah. Alan yeah. Challenge Mill. And I'm pretty sure that door is wide open for that. Competition is Yes, there. he can challenge him. <laughs> I think he will challenge him. And I, he goes, he go, I'm going to throw my in the hat right here. Mm -hmm. I think Curtis Samuel, sh they should challenge him to this offseason yeah. to say you should return punts. Not a big part of his history, but I think as a coach, you can be like, hey, yeah. man, we think you can do this and this would help us out. What did yeah. your coach say to you? Yeah, my coach college? came to me the first time. He asked me. And the second time he said, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. So, <laughs> but back then we wasn't, you know, that was college. We weren't yeah. getting NIL deals. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I just shut my mind and went back there, you know? And the playmaker, yeah. always, no matter what. Already. If the ball's in your hands, Tana was making the plays. We hope you enjoyed the Logan lives in the comments. And if you have more questions for Logan or really any of the guys, well, where are they? What do they do? Just leave a comment, right? Just leave the comments, yeah. I throw flags. <laughs>